Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. We've been discussing diabetes this morning. 1.4 million Americans are diagnosed each and every year, and statistically, diabetes is one of the costliest chronic diseases that disproportionately affects African American men and other minorities. Diabetes also remains the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. My next guest, they're known for their outstanding work that they've done in the Milwaukee community, and they're here today to share with us a different side of themselves. Eugene Kane is an award-winning journalist that spent 18 years writing his Raising Kane column for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. And Andre Lee Ellis, well, he's been a frequent guest on our issues. He is the founder of We Got This, a grassroots program that supports and mentors young black men in his neighborhood around Ninth and Ring in Milwaukee. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Thank Good you morning. all for being here. And as I stated, you both are well known in the city of Milwaukee for the work that you've done. You guys have that in common, but you also share uh, something else in common. You've both been diagnosed with diabetes and you both have done a pretty good job mm -hmm. managing the disease. So I have you here today to kind of encourage others uh, that they can uh, successfully do this and uh, then and, and really to give them a better idea of some of the things that you've gone through. So I'll start off with Andre. Uh, talk about your battle and when you were first diagnosed. Okay, I was diagnosed in 2002. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what happened was I'm the coordinator of Garfield Avenue Blues Jazz Gospel and Arts Festival. That's right. And that summer when I was at the festival, at midnight when the festival ended and I finished doing the work I usually do, I was totally drained and pretty much knocked me to the ground and I knew something devastating was happening. Mm. So I went to St. Mary's Hospital Emergency and um, long story short, I was diagnosed with uh, type two diabetes and it scared me to death. Cause okay. I've seen people lose limbs and just go through all kind of things because of that. Yeah. So I immediately started doing some research and started trying to figure out exactly what is, is the problem and how do you deal with it? So I went to the River West Co-op, uh, which is a vegan restaurant on the east side. Mm -hmm. And for the first year, they put me on they put me on insulin. I was taking like 60 units a day, three shots, mm. 20 units, wow. three times a day. They had me on that insulin. Um, they wanted me with the diabetes treatment center. The, the insulin seemed to do what they wanted it to do, but it was doing something else to me and my body, and so I wanted something else different to happen. And I was uh, signs of urinating all the time, uh, j even um, just thirsty all the time, mm -hmm. feeling dehydrated. So at the River West Co-op, it's a vegan restaurant. And for one year, the first year, um, I found out changing how you eat would change how you can manage your diabetes. That is so mm -hmm. true. We'll talk more about that. And Eugene, uh, your story of being diagnosed was eye-opening for everybody that knew you. I mean, uh, it's a blessing yeah. to have you here today to even talk about it. You were driving on the freeway in the D.C., Maryland area going to visit your sister yeah. over the holidays. And uh, luckily, someone found you on the side of the road in your car unconscious. Because I become I'm disoriented. It's a drive that when I go home back east, I go to Philadelphia, then I'll usually rent a car and drive up to D.C. to see my sister. Mm -hmm. So it's a drive I've taken literally dozens of times in my life, but this time, and it was just about a year ago, last Christmas, not this past one, but before mm -hmm. Christmas 2015, that everything just kind of crashed down on me. And what I was told after passing out and being discovered by a motorist who helped get my family to me and have me admitted to a hospital. What I found out is that essentially mine had been building to a point where I was had a dangerously high sugar level. I think Andre knows when it's high, it, it can be anything from 400, 500, 600. I had 1100 <gasps> count sugar level, which is I've had doctors in the hospital tell me they had never seen anything that high. Wow. And to tell the truth, after I was unconscious in the car, I woke up three weeks later in the hospital with no memory of anything that had happened. Mm. But that's when they told me I was diagnosed with diabetes, diabetic, type two diabetes. Because of my uh, seizure, I also suffered like a mini stroke, which is something that can be a result of that. Mm -hmm. So I actually do feel very fortunate <coughs> 
that there was a good Samaritan that helped me, but also that diabetes is something I've known about for years. My late brother had it at a very young age. Mm -hmm. My mother had it at a very advanced age where it really didn't have that much impact on her, on the way she lived. But I don't know if Andre has experienced the same thing. What amazes me, when you look at numbers of how many people have it worldwide and yeah. nationally, and how many African Americans are impacted, since my ordeal, I've learned of dozens of friends who are diabe diabetic, diabetes type 2, who I'd never known about before. Mm -hmm. I've known this guy for like <laughs> close to 30 years, and I had not really realized he was also diabetic. Yeah, yeah. So that has been the real bonding thing that I've gotten out of this experience is that as opposed to some sort of, you know, dreaded disease that it might have been years ago or decades ago, now it's a manageable disease, mm -hmm. and there are ways that you can basically listen to your body because your statistics about how many people are pre-diabetic are really eye-opening. Because mm -hmm. I was told, I was someone who had my sugar level checked every year, but still had never been told that I was on the verge of having the kind of like seizure that I had. Yeah, I am just so glad you're here to tell Oh, I'm glad story. to be here yes, too, really. Yes, yes. Uh, so did you guys <laughs> find it difficult to make that lifestyle change? Because I have an uncle who's 62 mm -hmm. and he just got diagnosed with diabetes mm. and uh, he really was having a hard time, you know, digesting the fact that he was diabetic, but making that switch of how mm -hmm. he ate. And I don't mean to bust him out on this, but no, he bust said, him out if you he love said yes. he, you know, my grandmother had told me that he's kind of upset because mm -hmm. he, you know, just can't get a grasp of what's going on or how to eat right. Um, so I called him up and just kind of told him what I knew. And I'm like, we've got enough people in this family that you can call them mm -hmm. and find out, you know, some of the things that they do that'll work for you. And that's the main thing is being able to communicate with someone else. But uh, he said, uh, yeah, well, I had breakfast. I looked at the cereal they told me to eat and the numbers for the cereal I had, they kind of were the same. So I had three bowls of it. <laughs> and okay, three yep. bowls. Key mm. and I said, what kind of cereal was it? Sugar crisp. Mm. I said, okay, mm. so for one, let's kind of stay away from things that have sugar in the title. <laughs> and mm. those, it's hard for some people that are used to eating what they want to eat, eating as much as they want to eat. And so now I think he's getting uh, a feel for what he has to do and the things he needs to eat. But you guys have probably figured out exactly what works for you because you both look great. And I was <laughs> talking to you one day and twice I have bought uh, this grass in a pot mm -hmm. <laughs> that it, I got to clarify that mm -hmm. wheat grass <laughs> mm -hmm. okay okay wheat yeah, grass that you were telling me. <laughs> and uh, you said you juice wheat grass and that is amazing for you and uh, your diabetes well what I found is I have a community garden on ninth and ring right and we started growing our own food and prior to that I knew nothing of it but then I remembered back to the River West Co-op that one year because as I was saying before that first year when they put me on organic all vegan food and it was hard not to eat, drink milk and, and and do any of the sugar and all of that stuff but when they did it after one year I was able to control my diabetes through eating and the doctor said let's try it then I got hard-headed and I started eating donuts and <laughs> fried chicken wings thinking and, it was all yeah, good right I, I felt better and that's the other thing about it diabetes is such a silent killer yeah mm -hmm. a lot of times you don't know until it hits you like it mm -hmm. did I was blessed that I felt whatever I felt and yeah, yeah. had been feeling it coming on once it got real strong that night and when I went to the hospital and I've also been blessed because I too have had those eight nine hundred dollar uh, nine hundred numbers of, mm -hmm. of um, sugar um, when you're testing your sugar but here's what it is you got to manage it you know you feel better when you test do you test yourself every mm -hmm. day every day yeah you, three times a day Eugene not three times <laughs> no. okay. me either but most times I <laughs> when, and, and when you think about it I try to do it so the other thing I try to to do is think about what do I eat in the morning because you pretty much got to get yourself as kind of redundant and boring but if when you feel fine if what you eat makes you feel fine you should eat that every day mm. so you'll feel fine every day mm -hmm. if you know that when you eat your scrambled eggs with cheese your blood sugar go over the roof mm. but do you do it with just egg yolk instead mm. I mean white egg whites you get a better number and okay. you get a difference same thing for desserts I'm a baker so I cook a lot of cakes and pies and so sugar's in it but I found that applesauce is a good substitute mm -hmm. for sugar when you're baking and so you can manage it and once you start playing it like an athlete 
and like an athlete does, mm -hmm. an athlete has to check and balance and whatever, whatever. When you think of it as I'm running this race and I'm going to win, do what it takes to mm -hmm. win, Eugene. Well, I think the advantage, <laughs> that, what he's shown is the advantage of him dealing with it for years longer than I have. Yeah. And that's stuff that has taught you. Mm -hmm. And I also. Are you still challenged in trying Oh, yeah, to the diet that? is the most challenging thing. Yeah. Because essentially, you know, I'm like Dre. I'm a guy, you know, mid middle aged black guy that started to like too much fried food and <laughs> like sitting on the couch and not exercising. And to tell you the truth, I think for black people in particular, what I learned from my experiences from talking to people, that there are predicting factors. I mean, if you're African American, you have to watch it. Mm -hmm. If you're sedentary, you don't get up and exercise a lot, you have to watch it. If you're overweight, you have to watch it. If you have a family history of diabetes, you have to watch it. All those four things, I don't know many black people in my acquaintance who don't have at least a couple of those things yeah. in their background. Yeah. I, I wanted to say to you is that culturally, we've mm -hmm. all eaten the same oh, way. Sure, so sure. I think that the numbers are really big because it's catching up to us. Mm -hmm. You know, because now with the younger people that are more interested and they're not eating pork and they're not eating mm -hmm. the fried food, you can find that that, that more young children and, and elderly people are getting diabetes, but the new cases aren't coming from the middle age or the younger group that are active and changing how they eat. My only real concern, the more I get educated about diabetes, is now I notice whenever I watch television, there's a slew of, of <laughs> commercials for pharmaceuticals yes. that are basically targeted at people with diabetes type 2, which is the largest group in this country. So it has become, in essence, a moneymaker thing. I have a diabetes doctor who regularly gets offered new drugs oh, yeah. to check my That's diabetes. That's a whole other conversation, yeah, but yeah. it's true. It's so very true. And uh, I want to point out the fact that you are you know, from Philadelphia, mm -hmm. and you, like myself, you have made Milwaukee your second hometown. Oh, sure, sure. And, uh, Can't get away from I it think, now. I know, right? And I think of your homegirl, Patty LaBelle. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Patty she's diabetic, is yeah. there. She says, I have diabetes, but diabetes doesn't have me. Mm -hmm. I've heard her say that a trillion mm, times saying. and uh, she's done uh, something as special as come up with cookbooks exactly, yeah. that are for people who are living with diabetes which is helpful but I think of people like Doug Banks who uh, is a radio personality yeah. who I knew from uh, my early days in radio he uh, suffered from diabetes he even lost sight in one of his eyes and uh, it sometimes takes uh, celebrities to kind of say to everyday people that this can be managed mm -hmm. and it also uh, takes some deaths of celebrities Mary Tyler Moore to also be an eye-opener that this disease can kill you mm -hmm. yeah so uh, is there as we wrap up real quick any advice for people at home who may be living with diabetes or know somebody who is I just think people, black people in particular, need to realize it's not a death sentence. It is very manageable. Of all the diseases you could get that can cause you death, diabetes might be one of the most manageable of them. So just love yourself and be healthy, and you can tackle it. Yes, it is possible. I, I just have one statement of it. I would say we all need to live and eat as if we already have diabetes. Mm -hmm. Amen to and that. And then we can mm -hmm. avoid getting it. Yes, mm -hmm. I love that. I love it. And uh, <laughs> just I want to just say don't be hard-headed because mm -hmm. You know, I make jokes. My auntie used to be cooking something. I'll say, Uncle Wilson can't eat that, can he? Oh, this is the lean part. And I'm mm, like, okay, mm. lean hog mocks. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Never heard of such. Mm. <laughs> so. I, I, tell, I tell the young brothers in, in the community where I'm at, because of diabetes, I eat better. And the better I eat, that's why I look so good. That's right. <laughs> now, thank you both so yeah. much for coming by. And thank you. I'm so happy to know that yeah. you're both doing well and oh, keep thank up you, the Andrew. good work. God thank you're doing well, too. Thank you. So Eugene Kane is an award-winning journalist, and Andre Lee Ellis is the founder of the grassroots organization We Got This. For more information on diabetes, you can visit the American Diabetes Association's website at diabetes.org, or you can call 1-800-DIABETES. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, thank you for watching, and I hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day. Thank you.